The headlines. Epidemic kills hundreds of cattle in Taraba as Gombe farmers raise alarm over bird and pest attacks on crops. Sergeant guns down retired ASP father in Maiduguri. Court rejects push to bar Fubara from spending public funds in rivers. And on the international scene, Democrats search for 2024 presidential candidates following Biden's exit. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I am Sumaya Bubakar. Thank you for joining us in our the details. Now, cattle owners in Dorofi, Kwara Kwara, Furumi, Mayo, Ngada, and other villages in Saridona Local Council of Taraba State have suffered significant losses due to an outbreak of cow disease. The bug, identified as hemorrhagic um, septicemia, was reported to have killed thousands of cows. The Commissioner for Agriculture and Food Security, Professor Nicholas Oliver, confirmed the outbreak on Sunday in Jalingu. He said the government has deployed veterinary officers to the affected communities to contain the disease. Oliver urged residents to support efforts of the veterinary officers in treating and vaccinating the remaining cows. He said government has to initiate measures to prevent the disease from spreading to neighboring communities. Economic instability, insecurity, high cost of production of farm produce, and delay in rainfall are some of the factors that led to the increase in prices of food items. This was contained during a visit to some government offices, farmyards, and some markets in Jalingo, the Taraba state capital. The report. The chairman, vegetable farmers, and the vice chairman, all farm association of Nigeria, Taraba state branch, Salman Hassan said one of the major reasons behind the high cost of the farm produce is the delay in rainfall, which affected the earlier plantations. He said climate change have resulted in setback to their businesses. On the dry season, we have a lot of challenges. The challenges we have, if you look at the petroleum, the petrol is too scarce. Many farmers have laid down their hands. They are not in the farm. Then most what we're supposed to produce, if we are producing at least 10 tons as of two, three years back, this time around with the cost of this hardship, with the hardship of this, with the cost of uh, foil and what have you. So only one ton or half of a ton would be out. Then it will be cost. The director of Ministry of Agriculture, Johanna Bulus, said government purchased 800 tractors to support farmers all across the state and also distributed chemicals and fertilizers to the farmers free of charge in order to boost crop yields this season. Men only empower the farmers to do the production. Uh, the government support them through the various inputs that it provides, like fertilizers, seeds, chemicals, tractors, given to the individual farmers. Some small-scale farmers blame the unfavorable government policies. So you see us here, we are buying this vegetable. Before, we are buying it 1,500, but now it's 1,800, 2,000 and above. <laughs> Each one we are selling it now 100 Naira. Before, we are selling it 50 Naira, 350, 300. But now it's one one thousand. We come to market with four thousand or maybe five thousand. You just buy something is only is that small lady you will not even feel those inside. So the thing is not like before. Before you come to market with two thousand, you just buy everything you like. But now, even at ten thousand, you will not get it. I bought here and sell it here to customers that are coming to buy at the late hours from the market. A bag of onion this week is 75,000 naira, and the other one brought from Ubi State is 65,000 naira. 
the cost of farm produce are increasing day by day. Before we used to buy it at a cheaper rent, but now it's very high. Like before, half quarter is 300, but now 1,000. Sometimes they will be arguing with us. Farmers were admonished to remain resolute in the face of economic challenges facing their operations. In several locations in Nigeria, losses are recorded as pigeons and crows are frequently observed in maize crops. In addition to harming grain, the development is seriously impending agricultural output and operations. Farmers in Yamal 2 Deba, local government area of Kumbi State, are facing such farm damage and are concerned that this development could exacerbate food inflation. Hassan Kohli tells us more. Eldabad refers to Askeria in the local dialect, forces a treat to maize during its early stages of development. Typically, the birds will target farms in the early morning or late evening, leaving the maize vulnerable to paste. Abdul Kadu, a farmer, demands the extent of devastation to his corn farmland in Kwadam community on Diamal to the local government area. We used to call this particular bat Kiria. The bat forces a tree to farmland degradation. As you can see, they frequently assault my field and destroy corn that with good cultivation will yield at least five bags of grain. When farmers are not around in the early morning or late evening, they attack crops. Since the scarecrow method does not work, we have been using a catapult to scatter them during the day. We are searching for more money ways to safeguard our farmland. And should this continue, it will undoubtedly exacerbate the inflation of food commodities, something we are not hoping for. Experts say that farmers face this issue every year, but it will be resolved as soon as the afro steps are taken at the afro moment. A farmer is expected to employ certain measures, and among these measures are number one, we have biological methods, number two, we have traditional methods, and number, uh, number three, we have the chemical methods. An example of biological method, methods that the, the farmer can employ in order to prevent economic loss in his farm is the use of tall barrier crops. For instance, a farmer can decide to sacrifice a portion of his last uh, of, of his farm especially the axis the four axis we have in the farm maybe by building tall crops like maize for instance sorghum and millet when these tall crops are planted they are planted earlier when they are planted if these pillar birds happen to enter the farm their the, the point of contact the first point of contact will be these tall barrier crops so the birds will ascend on these uh, tall barrier crops they will feed on the on the on the barrier crops, thereby preventing them from entering into the main farm, causing economic loss. According to recent reports, quailia birds have been seen in Mayoraneu in Arbokola local government area and Nahu Talalinga village in Karimlamid, a local government area of Taraba State. Small grass eaters, as these birds are called, are targeted rice plantations. From Gombe, Hassan Kohli, reporting for Trust TV. On security matters, a police sergeant, Sunday Watsani, has killed his father in Maiduguri, capital of Verno State. The incident occurred behind the state police command headquarters in Modugannari on Sunday. The suspect is attached to the Verno State of House of Assembly. And according to a security source, Watsani has been arrested and is currently in custody at GRA police station. Police Borno State Police Command are yet to comment on the incident. The Nigerian Army has reiterated that the ban on the unauthorized use of military camouflage remains in full effect. 
the director of army public relations major general onyema mwachiku said this in a statement on sunday while reacting to a video depicting a soldier molesting a civilian for wearing army desert camouflage uniform Mwachiku said the video footage was a still audiovisual being circulated by individuals with malicious intent to create tension between the military and the civilian populace. He said that only personnel of the armed forces of Nigeria and the Nigerian police force were legally permitted to wear military camouflage. Mwachiku said the regulation became expedient as terrorists, insurgents and other imposters had exploited the misuse of military camouflage to commit heinous crimes, thereby posing a significant security threat. Also, police in Katsuna has arrested suspected informants of bandits, social miscreants, fraudsters, and criminals that specialized in stealing point-of-sales machines from their unsuspecting victims. The police had also arrested a 10-year-old suspected informant of bandits from Nendume local government area of Katsuna State and busted a criminal gang of kidnappers for ransom in the ancient city of Katsuna. Abdullahi Ahmadi once again tells us more in this report. The command narrated how this 10-year-old child was taken to bandits by his friend Abba, now at large, to serve as their informant with the promise of 3,000 to 5,000 Naira proceeds from each successful operation. In connection with the suspected case of aiding and abetting armed banditry, the suspect was arrested following the receipt of intelligence on his nefarious activity, where he specializes in providing information on villages, routes, and potential targets to suspected armed bandits. Another syndicate of informants of bandits was also busted with a successful arrest of three persons at Baburga village in the outskirts of Kazna metropolis, who specialized in supplying credible information to bandits to aid their operations. The command has succeeded in arresting one lower Umaru male aged 70 year old of Baburga village in Batagara local government area and his son one Ibrahim Lawai, male aged 22 years old and his friend one Abdul Ghani Isa also 22 years old all of Baburga village in Batagara local government area of Kazina state. In the same vein the command also announced how its operatives successfully apprehended a syndicate of kidnappers for ransom following a tip-off at Sabur Ungwer Ofar Gaura in Kazna Metropolis. A 23-year-old Sadiq Abdullahi is currently being detained in connection with the disappearance and abduction of one Isia Kalawal, and the suspects admitted to have committed the offense. I was introduced to a bandit's kingpin in the forest by a friend called Abba, who took me to the bandit's den. While there, I was threatened and asked to be supplying information about communities where there are livestock and movement of security operatives, especially within the area of operation. I was lured into this unholy act by a friend who invited his victim Isia Kalawal into my room, where he mixed some substances into his drinks, removed monies, phones, and a bag from him. The victim was in my room for about two weeks before they evacuated him to a non-destination. Honestly, I had wanted to report the issue, but my friend threatened to kill me. While parading the suspects, the Kazuna Police Command, through its spokesman ASP Sadiq Aliu, advised parents and guardians to ensure proper upbringing of their children. Abdullah is Miami. Trust Television News. Kazana.
On litigation matters, a federal high court in Abuja has declined to bar Governor Simina Lai Fubara from spending government funds pending the hearing and determining the suit filed by the Martin Amaule led River State House of Assembly. Ruling on the motion ex parte, Justice Emeka Nwete declined to grant the prayers, though he ordered the plaintiffs to put the defendants on notice. Justice Nwete, however, granted the motion ex parte to serve the 5th and 10th defendants in the matter by substituted means, saying the judge further adjourned the matter to the 7th of August to hear the motion on notice. The court ruling comes after Fubara last week vowed to remain upright and never to govern the state on bended knees, no matter how much he is pushed politically. He said there was a fierce battle to destroy the soul of the state, but he expressed optimism that he will win the battle with the support of well-meaning persons who are standing firmly with him. A Max Airline aircraft lost six tires while attempting to take off from the Yola Airport in Adamawa on Sunday evening. The airline's director of public and consumer protection, Bimbo Oladeji, said the aircraft was carrying 119 passengers and six crew members. According to her, a Boeing 737 with registration 5NADB carrying 119 passengers and six crew members was cleared for takeoff from Yola Airport en route to Abuja. Bimbo said upon takeoff, a loud bang was heard, identified as the busting of the rare gear tires. Initially, two tires bust while attempting to, ta to taxi off the runway. The remaining two tires also bust, rendering the aircraft completely disabled. All passengers on board were evacuated for safety. This is Strauss News Update. Coming up. We'll take a look at how application of technology is positively impacting financial inclusion in the country. This and more after the break. Stay with us. Are you in search of a top-tier studio equipped with state-of-the-art gear for your next productions? Look no further than Trust TV. At Trust TV, we pride ourselves on offering a sizable studio space furnished with cutting-edge equipment perfect for podcasts, video productions, and audience-based shows. From professional cameras to advanced lighting setups, we've got everything you need to bring your vision to life. And the best part, our rates are affordable without compromising on quality. Ready to elevate your productions? Contact Aisha at 0803-646-3018 to book your studio at Trust TV today. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. If you're just joining us, this is Trust News Update. Here's a recap of our top stories. Robotu epidemic kills hundreds of cattle in Taraba as Gombe farmers raise alarm over bird and pest attacks on crops. And Sergeant guns down retired ASP father in Maiduguri. Moving on to more stories, the federal civil servants have been given until July 31st, 2024 to verify their identities on the portal of the Integrated Payroll and Personnel Information System amidst the planned stoppage of salaries and sanctions for ghost workers. Reports said civil servants have been rushing to generate their taxpayers' identification number at the Federal Inland Revenue Services Office nationwide. Part of the requirement for the verification is the TIN alongside the IPPIS number and salary account number. President Bola Mechinubu had directed that all civil servants who are drawing salaries from the government apart or after relocating abroad should be made to refund the money. The president also directed that the corporate supervisors and department heads be punished for aiding and abetting the fraud while they were in charge. 
Nigeria's e-payments platform have recorded tremendous progress over the past few years, reflecting significant growth in the application of technology to payment transactions. According to the Economist and Income Management Security Experts in 2023, the value of electronic payments on the Nigerian interbank settlement platform reached approximately about 60 trillion naira, and other e-payment platforms were nearing a total transaction value of 1 trillion naira. The report. The introduction of payment platforms like Opay, MoneyPoint, and PamPay has brought a lot of diversity and innovative business opportunity to the market. These platforms have significantly improved financial inclusion in the urban and rural areas of the country as people can easily open accounts and trade with one another. However, there are still challenges such as occasional complaints about the failure of e-payment transactions. The best support we can get to support the e-payment system is to strengthen our IT uh, infrastructure, our internet infrastructure, particularly uh, the broadband you know, the fiber optic cables that they seek to lay around around the country. And then that is the best support that the government can give. Then from a regulatory point of view, uh, the central bank needs to ensure that these fintechs that are onboarding so many uh, customers and so many citizens are also properly regulated. We just need to at least look at what is trying to uh, the current problem, uh, which is the issue of fraud around it, uh, which is the issue of network, which is the issue of infrastructure. So, and we just need to actually tackle that from from that, improve uh, the internal security so as to actually prevent fraud, ensure that there may be a uh, true level of authorization. Uh, so before a transaction can actually be consummated. So it simply means that after you have tried to do a transaction, a token will be sent to the phone of your person, or maybe a token will be sent to your email for second confirmation to actually prevent fraud. Residents of Lagos said electronic transactions significantly improve the flow of business transactions in the state. E payment is helpful and it reduces the queue at the bank. But the only thing I yeah, nice. The charges, they are charging us money. When we receive money, they will charge us. When we send that, they will charge us. If they can reduce the charges. I said that the payment transaction is very good. For certain people to get access to their money at easiest, at easiest rate. And for them to get a, a move on with their business transaction. So if you don't like that, if you go to ATF machines, Sometimes great people, sometimes they are a network of not available. So it will make people possible. So the payment transaction is make people easier to access their money. The e payment system in Nigeria has significantly contributed to the growth and development due to increased level of financial activities among the people. Some locations in the FCT are likely to witness heavy rainfall that may lead to flooding within the period of 21st to 25th of July 2024. The locations including Mabushi District and Kurudu, a suburb in the territory, this was contained in a statement issued by the National Flood Early Warning Systems Diffuse Center, Federal Ministry of Environment, Abuja, and made available to FCT Emergency Management Department, the FEMD. Following the early warning, the AG Director General of FEMD, Florence Dawon Wenegieme, is calling on the facility maintainers and management to the silt blocked manholes in Mabushi District to ensure free flow of water in the event of heavy rains. Wenegieme has also urged Abuja Environmental Protection Board to clear all blocked drainages and ensure evacuation of waste in the district to mitigate the impact of flooding. On the international scene, the Democrats are in uncharted territory on Monday as they raced against the clock to find a new standard bearer after President Joe Biden's stunning late exit from the 2024 race for the White House. Vice President Kamala Harris was in pole position as the party promised a transparent and orderly process to replace the 81-year-old Biden 
who bowed Sunday to Democratic concern over his age and capacity to beat Republican Donald Trump in November. The announcement set off a scramble to confirm a new candidate at the Democratic Convention in Chicago on August 19th. Democratic lawmakers and party leaders, including at least a third of U.S. senators, some key governors and Bill, Bill and Hillary Clinton have rallied behind Harris, who crucially also received Biden's swift endorsement. But many big names from the House Minority Leader, Hakeem Jeffries, and his influential predecessor, Nancy Pelosi, to Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and former President Barack Obama were initially holding back. The Democratic ticket has been in disarray since Biden's dismiss, dismal, or dismal debate performance in June. And finally, in sports, the Nigerian senior women's basketball team, the Tigers, suffered a second consecutive defeat in a warm-up game to Serbia in Belgrade on Sunday. The African champions lost 62 point to 70 points to the 10th ranked country in the FIBA World Ranking. The Nigerian team will play their final warm-up game against Japan on July 24th in Lille, France before the start of the basketball event at the Olympics. Nigeria faces a titanic battle against Canada, Australia and hosts France in Group B. And with that, we've come to the end of Trust News Update. Do not forget to follow us across all our social media platforms and join our YouTube live stream for more news programs and documentaries. I am Sumaya Abubakar. Thanks for watching.